Just a moment ago, the lights, the cameras, the action, all the pyrotechnics, everything was ablaze, everything was allowed here in Bank of America Stadium as Carolina emerged from their tunnel. And we are ready to go as the Panthers get set to match up with the New Orleans Saints. down to the sideline wow what a catch doesn't get a lot out of it but he is able to keep the feet in bounds call it a gain of three and it'll make it a second down Shift together here from the D line. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Christian McCaffrey, everybody knows the family pedigree, and they're hoping for a lot of big things from him, aren't they? He gave great evidence of that while he was at Stanford. Tremendous amount of big plays, whether he was running the ball, catching it, returning kicks, you name it. A lot of people were wondering if he would go at number eight to the Panthers because he's not a big guy, but his ability to make plays in the open field, Panthers could not pass him up. to the ground on first it's McCaffrey and he will lose yardage back to the 34 yard line that's going to go as a loss of two and it'll be second down but Nick Fairley's on his game he is your prototypical defensive tackle who can make disruptive plays great hands really good quickness The play clock's running down. Newton now to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Kenny Vaccaro. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Well, Brandon, this is a former first-round pick, and he's been a bit of a disappointment in his career up till now, but he's still got room to grow. And this is an excellent play right here to come away with the football. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. It's Breeze. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Looking for Ginn, and it's intercepted. Picked by Darrell Worley. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. They're trying to resurrect his confidence. Last week was a disaster. Five interceptions in that loss and another pick there. I played with a quarterback like this before, and he had a tough game. And the head coach said, I'll take him. I'll fix him. The very next game, he started out the exact same way. And the head coach turned to the offense coordinator and said, he's yours from now on. <laughs> Someone has to take responsibility and work with him and try and get him settled. 
Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He'll buy some time right. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. And now it's second down. Toss. This is McCaffrey. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He lost two there. And it's third down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position. And we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? A shotgun snap for Newton. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. McCaffrey following the penalty. And a short gain here down to the 22. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. They fake the give. Newton. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position. Couldn't hold on. Third down. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. And he'll go down back at the 26 yard line. Sheldon Rankins in there to drop him for a four yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. This a 43 yard attempt. And Gano is going to miss this one left. Oh, it's no good for Gano. And this will remain a scoreless game. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, sent this one off target. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. Only three there on the screen. It's second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner. Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Now the first carry for Adrian Peterson. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They've got a third down and five to start things out. Hey, hey, 
Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's got Sneed. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. You never know where motivation's going to come from. I remember 2016, Mark Ingram fumbled in two consecutive games and got benched in the second game, but bounced back to go over 1,000 yards for the season. Yeah, first time in his six NFL years that he's done that, finished with 1,043. Throwing now is Breeze. Brought in left side by Sneed. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Breeze to throw on second down. They go screen. This is Ingram. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Darren Waller, his second touchdown on the season. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes. Add another one to the total. You know, it's funny. I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game. And he made a play early in that one where the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. <laughs> now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. A reminder, coming up in the Sunday night game, matchup you don't see very often, a rematch of Super Bowl 18. The Raiders traveling to Washington. And then tomorrow on Monday night, we'll see the Cowboys heading to the desert to take on the Cardinals. Former NFC East rivals. down it's Newton and the pressure will get to him he goes down now there is a flag on the play but this looks like holding on the offense Here's Newton now on second down. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Sheldon Rankins in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. So now Cam leads the Panthers up following the sack. Carolina facing third and long. A play fake to Stewart. It's Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this.
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Cam trying to rally his guys to the line as quick as he can. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Somewhat surprising stat. The Panthers, they haven't had a 1,000-yard rusher on the ground since 09. That's the longest active drought in the NFL, but certainly they're hoping Christian McCaffrey can change that. Not just as a ball carrier, but also as a pass receiver and take pressure off of Cam Newton, give him some easy completions, and maybe he doesn't get hit as much in the pocket that way. Now a play fake here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. On second and ten, Newton. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Now a first down throw for Newton. Throw's going to be incomplete. All right, need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. McCaffrey with a first down and more. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. field comes New Orleans and they had to wait a long time to get the football back probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense in summer agreed what you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly right hoping for a three and out so that didn't happen you can't yell at your D for that they've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field they run again with Peterson and he'll be brought down here at the 28. 
Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and get enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. To throw, it's Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Caught on the left side by Ginn. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Third down and four. To throw is Breeze. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. It's taken to the 26. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Panthers will get it here as they take possession. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. They pick up 12 on the play there and they move the chains. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. Now the Auburn alum, Artis Payne. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think of run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. They'll run again here with Artis Payne. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down to the offense needing five yards. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Set, 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 set. 
On second down, McCaffrey. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Pitching it out to McCaffrey. Room here to run. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Second down and four. Time running out here on the play clock. Here's Artis Payne. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Final minute now of the third quarter. They'll toss it to Artis Payne. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give them four on the carry there, but that only takes them back to where they started. Third and ten. The toss play, Stewart, and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. He lost two, and it brings up four. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. So out on the field now, Graham Gano in a big spot. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And this won't make it. Off the crossbar and no good. And a big let down there as this remains a tie game. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 11 more on that one and another first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. So up through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Play clock winding down. 
They'll try to run with McCaffrey. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Six yards still to go here on second and goal. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. They'll come out in the pistol. Both the run and pass still in play here on third and goal from the three. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. And Gano's kick is right through. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. On the return, it's Ted Ginn Jr. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here at a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Caught right side, it's Snead. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. On second down, Ingram. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Here's Breeze to throw. Here's a screen to Powell. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. A good pick up there on first as the screen pass gets him eight. Breeze, one of the best ever in these situations as he's trying to get his guy set. He'll look to throw. This is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Breeze to another longtime vet again for the New Orleans first. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Peterson gets the handoff from Breeze. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. The Saints on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Back to throw. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. back to throw and that's going to be incomplete I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me I didn't see anything open and this play just didn't look right from the beginning it did not I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away dangerous pass incomplete and the offense readies for play number 10 of this series back to throw it's brought in right side by Ginn. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. To throw his breeze. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I think that's a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So he came that close to tying it, but this one sails wide by a whisker. And Brandon, pro football is a game of inches in more ways than one. That one looked good the whole way. But it's agony on one sideline, celebration on the other. The Panthers down to a knee out of the victory formation. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The Panthers down to a knee out of the victory formation. Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football.